Welcome to Two Guys in a Ride. Today we're going to review the 2021 Ford Mustang Mach E. I'll tell you about the horsepower, cargo, dimensions, and safety. And I'll tell you about the interior, the controls, and all the technology. But before we get started, take a minute, click that subscribe button down below, and hit that bell icon so you never miss one of our videos. So what do you say, Nate? <laughs> Let's, Let's go, go for, for a ride. ride, an all-electric ride. Today, we're working with our friends at Maury's Minnetonka Ford in Minnetonka, Minnesota. The Mustang Mach-E is available in four trim levels, starting with the Select at $42,895, the Premium at $47,000, there is a California Route 1 at $49,800, and the GT at $60,500. This specific Mustang Mach-E is presented here in beautiful, iconic silver, and it has a black onyx perforated Active X Leatherette interior. And I gotta say, it is really nice. This particular one does have an MSRP of $55,800, and that's before potential $7,500 federal tax credit. It is powered by an 88 kilowatt uh, lithium ion battery that produces 346 horsepower and 428 pound foot of torque. And it's driven with a single speed transmission and it has electronic all-wheel drive with a rear primary and front secondary electric motor. Now with that, Ford says that the Mach-E's all-wheel drive system is brand new and you can apply torque independently to the front and rear axles where you know most all-wheel drive systems kind of share that. Well, this system was tuned to provide excellent traction on the road in both wet and snowy conditions, which is a good thing for us here in Minnesota and you guys out in other uh, snow belts. The Mach-E is actually the first production Ford tuned by the Ford Performance team using its racing simulator down in North Carolina, the, the home of NASCAR. So now the charge capability is SAE J1772. What does that mean? Well, it's a combo connector system. And the charge port is capable of charging on both 120 volt and 240 volt and direct current, which is DC fast charge, and AC charging up to 10.5 kilowatt hours with 48 amp capability. Now DC charging is up to 150 kilowatt capability and on the side here, when you do charge, there is an illuminated LED charge status indicator on the charge port. Now there is a, the Ford mobile charger does have a switchable cord, uh, that uh, switchable cord end to allow customer charge functionality with 120 volt up to 15 amps and 240 volt up to 32 amps. So you get some choices there. Now, I know that was a lot of information, so I have listed all of that in the description area below this video as well. Out front, you see these are fully automatic LED projector beam, low and high beam headlights, and they do have signature daytime running lights. And I like those dynamic turn signals you see going on right there as well. The headlights also have a courtesy delay and are wiper activated. You see that three bar design element also in the headlights and it's playing off the rear tail light design that uh, in turn they are paying tribute to the original Mustang lighting design. I think it's a really nice cool feature to, to go back and pick up that look. I like the body colored grille, if you would, with a galloping pony with the gloss black surround and it's also got the front camera located at the trim of the top of that black trim. Now it is a body colored front bumper with black rub strip fascia accent and you see it does have parking sensors and down below in the middle where you would see a normal grill, it is a grill but they are 
active aero shutters. Now up top, I really love the two bulges that give this a fast and menacing look. And above that, you do have speed sensitive, rain detecting, variable intermittent wipers, and they do have a heated park area. And it is an acoustic laminated and infrared reflective windshield. Let's take a look around the side. Okay, along the side, you see these are the 19 inch uh, faced machined aluminum faced wheels and they do have the nice high gloss black painted pockets and they're wrapped in 255-55 R19 all season tires. Now up front, the front suspension is struts with coil springs and anti-roll bar and out back, that's just, the rear suspension is multi-link with coil springs. It also does have four wheel ABS and there are 18 inch front brake rotors and 17 inch rear brake rotors and i like the nice painted silver brake calipers i also do like the gloss black lower body side cladding and the rocker molding and the gloss black wheel well trim and these are gloss black capped painted covered um, power side view mirrors with power folding they have heated glass and they have the led turn signal indicators and they have a projection uh, pony uh, projection lamp at night that you can see, which is also part of the uh, perimeter approach lighting that comes on this vehicle. Now there are black door handles, if you will, it's a little blade right here on the front door, uh, or you can use, and you can, sorry, you can, uh, there is a keypad as well, and there is a push button to open the door, or you can actually use your phone as a key as well. Now this is acoustic laminated glass on the front row side windows and I do like the black belt line and window trim and I really do like the fast back look with a slight optical illusion here uh, with that black roof line actually being a little bit taller than the silhouette of the body color shows. So the silver is here and it cuts down but you do have the black up top. I also like the rear quarter panel hips there. They kind of echo the classic Mustang lines. And if you look at uh, all Mustangs currently, they've got that nice little hip line and that hip feature as well. Up top, there is a fixed in place panoramic glass roof. And of course, no roof rail bars or anything like that. Let's take a look around the back. Okay, out back, I do like this gloss black, beautiful roof spoiler. And it does have that LED third mount uh, brake light in it and this is actually a fixed rear window and it does have a fixed interval wiper and of course it does have a defroster also this is a hands-free lift gate with the uh, foot powered uh, kick up and stuff and i got the key inside the car so i'm not sure if it'll open right now i guess it won't i do like this lip spoiler and i really do like the galloping pony logo below and you can see these really cool full led lights with the sequential amber turn signals and they have that classic mustang lighting design that echoes from the front end as well it is a body colored rear bumper with black rub strip fascia accent and down below in the middle down there you'll see they are the backup lights and of course no tailpipe it's electric of course not so, okay let's take a look at the cargo area it is a little rubberized push button there and you can see that this does have the little cargo uh, security screen. It is, uh, the second row seats are 60-40 split. There is LED lighting and there is a 12 volt area back here on the passenger side, but there are no rear seat releases or release handles back here to lower the second row. You can reach way up or you can go around and open up the door uh, on each back seat and lower the seats that way. Um, you know, it's just a personal preference. I'd have much rather had a, a release handle back here to make it easier to use. Underneath the cargo area, there is a spare tire mobility kit. And as you see it here with the seats folded completely down, it's 59.7 cubic feet max cargo. Max cargo behind the second row, as you see it, is 29.7 cubic feet. Now up front, there is a front trunk and it's 4.7 cubic feet of storage space and it is also water resistant and washable and it does feature a convenient drain as well as a little cargo management system. Back here again, cargo floor length to the first row is 69 inches. Cargo floor length to the second row with the rear seats up in place is 34.5 inches. 
Cargo width at the belt line is 43.5 inches. Cargo width in, internally between the wheel houses is 41 inches. And cargo opening height, 27 and a half inches. Liftover height, getting something off the ground into the car is 31 inches. Going back up to the front, that trunk, the length is 37 and a half inches. Its width is 10 inches and its depth is 13 inches. So let's talk about some of the safety systems that are available on this really cool looking 21 Ford Mustang Mach-E. Well, there is advanced track electronic stability control. You do have ABS and driveline traction control. It does have the Ford Copilot 360. It has blind spot information system. There is automatic emergency braking. It has lane keeping alert, lane keeping assist, lane departure warning, reverse sensing system, Ford's My Key system that includes st uh, top speed limiter, auto volume limiter, early low fuel warning, and programmable sound chimes as well as a belt minder with auto mute plus lots more. And there are a few packages available on the Mach-E. You can get the 360 degree camera with split view and front washer. There's the Ford Copilot 360 2.0, the Ford Copilot 360 Assist. There's a heated steering wheel, a hands-free foot activated power lift gate, which of course this vehicle does have, and so much more. Now let's talk about the dimensions. Okay, front track is 64 inches, rear track 64 inches, maximum width 74.1 inches, overall length 185.6 inches, height 63.9 inches, and it rides on a wheelbase of 117 and a half inches. It does have a ground clearance of five and a, excuse me, 5.7 inches and a curb weight of 4,920 pounds. Has a pretty good turning circle of 38.1 feet and a fuel capacity, ah, got you there, zero gallons. So what about its safety? Well, overall rating has not yet been rated by either IIHS or the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration. So then let's talk about its performance. Well, not bad. Zero to 60, 4.8 seconds. Standing quarter mile, 12.2 seconds with a top speed, 100. 55 miles per hour. Well, what about its appearance? Looks like a Mustang that's put on a few pounds, but still carries it well. The modern design of this iconic, of the iconic Mustang lines, and it has a sleek and muscular curves to it. And again, I like those rear hips and everything about it. I think it's a really nice design. It really looks good. So what about its dependability? Well, its basic warranty is three, three years, 36,000 miles, and it has a battery warranty of eight years, 100,000 miles, and roadside assistance of five years, 60,000 miles. And finally, economy. Not bad, electric vehicle, 96 city, 84 highway MPG, with an EPA estimated target range of 270 miles. What does MPG mean? Well, it stands for miles per gallon of gasoline equivalent and it measures the fuel efficiency of vehicles that run on non-liquid fuels such as hybrid and electric models. To determine MPGE ratings, the EPA uses the precise amount of electric energy that's equal to the energy in one gallon of gasoline. By determining the vehicle's consumption per distance, the EPA can calculate its MPGE. The agency uses advanced computer modeling or actual driving cycles to convert native units into a gasoline energy equivalent. By considering the liquid fuel's tank to wheel and an electric vehicle's wall to wheel consumption, it can measure the amount of energy that the owner will most likely pay to use. For a battery powered car, the distance it travels per that measure of energy determines its MPGE rating. Still confused? Want more information? Head over to the EPA's website to find out more. 
Now let's take a look inside, but before we do, make sure to check out my notes in the description down below, and please take a moment to give us a like, leave a comment, click on, I guess it's over here, click on that subscribe button. All right, to get in, it's just a simple push. The door pops open and stays open. It won't close again because there's a kickstand that comes out, and you just simply pull the handle. Now on the door itself, you do have um, a physical pull lever, which I like, and in case the battery ever goes, all four doors will open with a, you just simply pull it all the way back. You do have auto up and down, all four windows. You have your left and right mirror controls. You have a power folding button, as well as your window lockout. Now up here, you do have a three-person memory setting, as well as your unlock and lock buttons. Then you have uh, one of your 10 Bang & Olsen uh, speakers right here in the door. And then you do have bottle storage below. You've got ample storage in front of that. And then they've put a little storage area right behind where you see my hand right here. I do like the Mustang door sill with a pony on it. Both seats are eight-way power, including lumbar. And they are an active X material. And I really liked them when I was driving. Uh, they're grippy enough to keep you planted in the seat and yet you can slide if you need to. I do like it when they have extra storage underneath the center console as they do here. And then uh, coming over, you got your foot pedals. You got a nice left foot rest right here. Coming up, you do have the double pull frunk opener. Up above that, we do have our lighting controls. We also have your max defrost here. Your lighting controls are here. This does have auto lights. And then your dashboard brightness and dimness switch is right here. The steering wheel itself is a tilt and telescope, and that lever is physical, and it's right here. In the front, headroom is 38.9 inches, shoulder room 57.6 inches, leg room 41.7 inches, and hip room 55.4 inches. All right, it is a push start, and that's located right up here. Like the pony. All right, so the uh, the dashboard itself is uh, 10.2 inches in length, and uh, there really isn't anything you can customize on the dashboard. Uh, however, uh, just uh, just kind of lay it out. You've got your range here. You will have turn by turn navigation that shows up here. You've got all of your driver assist systems here, and then you have vehicle information over here. Now underneath, you've got an odometer that's always there, along with your gear selectors on the far right. You've got seat belt indicators showing you um, which seats are buckled or not in the front. Um, and then you've got a driver assist uh, icon down here. Uh, basically, this whole bottom area is just sort of an information bar. And then down in here, you've got a compass, uh, but it'll also will read the ambient temperature. So that's what's all in there. This right here is a monitoring system that will watch you. This car is equipped for the Active um, 2.0, which means that when it comes available from Ford, uh, you can do the hands-free driving in, in certain stretches of road, but that will monitor you to make sure that you're paying attention. And the minute you're not, it's, it's going to uh, take that off and warn you. So uh, coming back from there, uh, of course, you have your traditional uh, turn signals and you've got your, your high beam, low beam here. You've got your windshield wiper controls over here. And on the left side of the steering wheel, you have all of your cruise control functions plus your um, lane assist right here. So to turn cruise control on, it's just a simple push and it will show up in the dashboard here that says it's, it's on. You'll get your gap setter indicator up there. And if I press the gap setter indicator, you can see the uh, the distances right there. This does have fully adaptive cruise control, including stop and go. Over on the right side of the steering wheel here, you've got your voice command button. You've got your phone hang up button. You have got your volume for the media. And then you also have changing channel channels and stations right here, or skip forward, skip backwards, say in Pandora or something. All right, well, let's move over to the infotainment screen. So the infotainment screen itself is a 15 and a half inch screen, and it has uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, both are wireless, 
AM and FM radio, HD radio, X, Sirius XM, uh, Bluetooth, and of course a 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot. All right, we will cut a separate video on the driver's information screen and the infotainment screen, um, and you can uh, click on that if you want to watch the details of those things. Um, I will mention that it is a 560 watt Bang & Olufsen sound system with 10 speakers. All right, moving down below that, usually we're off the infotainment screen, but in this case, we're still on it. You have your climate buttons here, okay? This is a dual zone auto climate control. And the only physical button you have is uh, this one here, but it's, it has nothing to do with temperature. It has to do with your volume. And uh, it actually, um, Ford says this is not actually connected to anything. It's got some special things on the back side of it that rub the screen. So it imitates a hand doing it, but I really like the fact that this has got a physical uh, power uh, volume switch. All right, as far as the climate control goes, you've got all of your base controls here. You just tap on it and you can slide it up or down. You've got um, your heated seats, your heated steering wheel, your fan speed right here, your, all your defrosters here. And of course, on the passenger side, it's heated as well. All right, moving down below that, you do have a storage tray on this side and then a wireless charger on this side, and it does fit a large size smartphone. And the interesting, interesting thing is based on consumer feedback, Ford put that in that position specifically so that people could still see their phone screen while it was charging. Behind that, you have got your uh, two cup holders right here. And then directly behind that, you have got your um, active park assist button that'll help you do parallel or perpendicular parks. Um, I also do a park out assist, so it'll help you get out of those uh, spots as well. I like it that they put the hazard button right here because there really wasn't a spot in the screen and I'm glad they didn't make it a soft touch button in the screen. Back behind that, you have your uh, emergency parking brake and then you have your typical, uh, what we see now in Ford's, your gear selector, which is simply a rotate um, to switch gears and then you have this one here which just simply puts you in uh, low mode. All right, behind that, you have sort of a little bit of a different of an armrest area. You got a nice armrest here, and this lifts up, but there is a gap between the bottom and the storage compartment. So if I pull this back, this is a rubberized uh, pushing tray here, and down below you've got quite a bit of storage. You do have a spot to stick your key in. Um, you do have a 12 volt outlet back there, and then the bottom is a uh, felt lined. Moving over to the glove compartment here, you got a soft and dampened opening. It's got a pretty thick wall right here, which is kind of interesting. Um, but you do have Apple storage back here, enough to get your you know owner's manual and your insurance papers and that kind of stuff in there. Okay. And then coming up to the mirror, this is a, a rimless mirror. So you really don't see a border on it, but it is a automatic uh, rear view dimming mirror. Coming up to the, uh, the dome here, you've got, of course, your light switch here. You do have some ambient light that shows kind of all the time. It just kind of makes this area glow softly, so it's not a bother while you're driving, but you can still see things. Uh, and then you have, of course, a light switch here uh, that turns everything on. This one will just turn, you know, the particular side that you're on. And then this one right here will determine whether uh, you have the dome lights on when the car, the doors are open or not. Coming back from behind there, you do have a sunglass holder. And then your home link garage buttons are right up here in the uh, visor. And the visors, you pull them down here and open them up. You do have two nice uh, LED lights right here. And if you pull them out, they are telescoping on both sides. Let's take a step into the second row. In the second row, headroom is 38.3 inches, hip room 53.3 inches, leg room 38.1 inches, and shoulder room is 55.9 inches. All right. In the second row, you have uh, two of your speakers out of your 10, and then you have your auto up and down window switch. You've got uh, some storage area right here. Um, the both seats have map pockets right here and then in the center you have a usb c and a usb a outlet as well as your uh, climate vent controls right there 
Now, I, I have the seat adjusted to where it was comfortable for me, and oh my gosh, I've got oodles of room. I got close to four inches of knee room. I have got, man, to, to the actual cloth part here, I mean, I've got, wow, like two inches, and then even more clearance to the, uh, the fixed panoramic sunroof. Uh, so plenty of room. The seats themselves are comfortable. This is that ActiveX material, and I really, really like it. Um, it should should wear a little better than leather does over time. You do have a center armrest, which of course is elevated, and then you got two cup holders in there. In addition to that, you do have uh, two LED lights back here for reading. You got a coat hanger right here, and then all four doors have a grab handle. The seats themselves are 60-40 split, and uh, they they don't recline or pull forward or backwards, but they will lay flat forwards to give you more trunk space. All right, coming up next, join us for a ride. Okay, my turn first to drive the brand new Mustang Mach-E. You know, I gotta say, getting in it and starting it up is pretty, um, pretty conventional. I was surprised by that. Yeah, it's quiet inside too. Not bad, and I like, they actually pipe in some like acceleration noise, so it's not all like completely quiet. Uh, you do get that feeling that you're almost in a regular um, uh, fossil fuel powered vehicle and not an electric vehicle because you get a little bit of acceleration noise from outside, and of course with a battery, you don't typically, you, you wouldn't get that. Um, you know, safety systems included, wow. Uh, <laughs> what does it not have? Uh, you know, it's got all the different uh, safety cameras and ABS and uh, forward collision and uh, backup assist and rear braking and blind spot, all those things that I covered in detail in my exterior review. I like the fabric on the dashboard that is actually covering the Bang & Olufsen uh, stereo system and it's mimicked also on the speaker panels on the door. It really does very much look really, really nice. Um, it's got like a, a, a fake carbon fiber look here on the dashboard as well. You've got the stitching, contrasting stitching on the seats and on the dashboard. The dashboard kind of mimics the two pod look of the original Mustangs. Um, I wouldn't go so far as to call this a Mustang. You know, they call it the Mustang Mach-E. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's not bad at all. I like the interior look and the interior design. So, here we go. And, oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's kind of like warp speed. I love it. You can just see the numbers on the dashboard just clicking over very, very fast. And you had a growl like the exhaust was actually coming out of the car from that piped in sound. And it was really, really cool. And um, I'm gonna try that again, that was fun. You've got instant torque. And it, and it sets you back in your seat. Oh, I hope you can appreciate that. It was very fast, so yeah. Definitely, you're going to want to get out and go test drive one of these just so you can play with that instant torque. That was really, really fun. So, Well, that's our review of the 2021 Mustang Mach-E all-wheel drive extended. And we appreciate you spending some time with us. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And please, click on that subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching.